Well, in the United States, there's a broad coalition of groups uh, organized under uh, an umbrella called the Citizens Trade Campaign. We have consumer groups, labor unions, environmental groups, family farm, faith groups that have come together um, to oppose the expansion of what we call the NAFTA agenda or the North America Free Trade Agreement um, that happened in the United States 20 years ago. We've seen that that model has been a failure in terms of promoting uh, jobs and um, the environment and so forth in the U.S. And so um, we have been mobilizing to oppose the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which is the Obama administration's negotiation with the Pacific Rim countries in, in Asia and Latin America, and then also this, this uh, TTIP negotiations. Um, the, we are very concerned in the United States about what the implications could be for um, for our financial regulation, for example, post-crisis. There, um, we worked very hard to re-regulate the financial sector. Those that has been a very um, uh, that's been a process that has been uh, watered down by Wall Street and by other banks. And we know that they're trying to use TTIP as a way as another tool that they can use to tie government's hands and the ability to actually regulate finance and um, so that we can um, support the economy as opposed to having another crisis that could lead to another recession. Um, we are very concerned about what the implications would be for um, our local uh, public procurement policies. So at the local level, we have very popular policies that support, use our tax dollars to reinvest in our local economies through buy local programs. We know the European Commission has specifically targeted some of our cities to, uh, to open up and to make it more difficult for us to actually reinvest and support social goals with our tax money. Um, we have been, uh, we've seen the record of NAFTA in terms of the investor state dispute settlement, which is uh, elevates corporations to the level of nation states, allows them to sue our governments for millions or billions of dollars in taxpayer compensation for laws that, that protect our environment or public health and so forth. We've seen an explosion of those cases. Under NAFTA and U.S. free trade agreements, there's a moratorium on fracking, fracking that's been challenged. Medicine patent policies, toxics bans, pollu uh, polluters have had to have been paid millions or billions of dollars in compensation. And we know that by expanding that flawed system um, and unjust system, where of corporate rights through the TTIP would be just the tip of the iceberg and be very dangerous. Um, we There are 75,000 corporations that would be newly empowered to use this mechanism um, on both sides of the Atlantic. So those are just few. We're very obviously very concerned about the process by which this negotiation is happening behind closed doors. Um, in, in the US, actually, there is a system of 600 corporate advisors who have access to the text and who can actually have um, are engaging in it while the public and even our elected representatives have been locked out. So we've been very vocal about that as well. Well, it's been very exciting to come here uh, to this meeting to hear about the mobilization that's happening on this side of the Atlantic and to see how the movement has grown even in the past few months in, um, in countries around Europe. In the United States, as I mentioned, we have this coalition that has been um, mobilizing against this this agenda. And in the US, what we are doing and what we will continue to do is to stop um, the um, Congress, our Congress, our legislative body, from giving its authority to uh, President Obama and the U.S. Trade Representative to negotiate this pact. There is, under our Constitution, the legislative branch has the authority over trade policy, and they have delegated what they call fast track, which is an extreme delegation of their authority, which allows the executive to negotiate the agreement and bring it back for just an up or down vote without any amendments. And that is very unpopular now because of the record of these massive trade agreements and the devastation it's caused in the U.S. So because of our organizing, three-fourths of the president's own party have said they will not delegate this authority to him. And, and so we know that, so we have, we will delay the ability of them to be able to conclude the agreement by making sure that there is no um, a delegation of that authority. And then we hope that with, um, with activists here in Europe who are mobilizing at the member state level and through the European Parliament, et cetera, that we'll be able to 
make clear that there are certain areas, particularly under the Investor State Dispute Settlement or ISDS and the transparency and some of the major concerns around regu uh, regulations and public interest regulations, that this wish list of corporations that is embodied in the TTIP won't be able to go forward. We've been able to defeat these types of, of, of massive agreements in the past, the multilateral agreement on investment in the late 90s, 2000s. There was an attempt to expand NAFTA to the free trade area of the Americas um, in the early 2000s. That was also defeated through citizen opposition, and we believe that we can do that together this time too.